Thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited to be part of Svelte Society Day 2020. I appreciate you all for being here and listening to what I'm going to say. So last year, Rich talked about rethinking reactivity. In You Gotta Love Front End and announced Svelte Tree. Those who you who didn't watch it, I highly recommend it. It is nothing short of mind blowing. Svelte Tree moves the reactivity into the language. Being able to declare and update a reactive variable, just like how you would do for a normal JavaScript variable, is magic. And the secret behind the magic is that Svelte is a compiler. My name is Tan Li Hao. I'm a front-end engineer at Shopee, a leading e-commerce company in the Southeast Asia region. Well, this talk is about the Svelte compiler. I'll be giving you an overview of Svelte compilation pipeline and links to the actual source code so you can check them out. Don't take my word for it. If this is the first time you're learning about compilers, according to Wikipedia, a compiler is a computer program that translates computer code written in one programming language into another language. Let's look at a few examples of compilers in real life. A C++ compiler. A C++ compiler compiles C++, a programming language, code into binary code, another language code, which we humans don't write it anymore. Another example that is closer to our heart is Babel. It compiles a next generation JavaScript code into a browser compatible JavaScript code. And lastly is Svelte. Svelte compiles Svelte component into JavaScript code. So let's talk a bit more on how does a compiler works. A compiler first reads, your, reads through your source code character by character and then break it down into a smaller pieces called tokens. A compiler then goes through the list of tokens and create a structure, a tree-like structure based on the grammar of the language. The tree structure is what we call abstract syntax tree or AST for short. It is a tree representation of the input code. And sometimes the compiler will apply some transformation to the AST. It uses tree traversal algorithm such as deferred search to go through every node and make transformation there. Finally, the compiler will take the AST and generates a code based on the AST. In summary, a compiler is nothing but a parsing source code to AST, making transformation such as optimization or transformation and then generate codes from the AST. So here are a few resources that I use when I was learning about compilers. Be sure to check them out. So now the more interesting topic, how does the Svelte compiler works? Here is an overview of the process. Svelte passes the code into AST and then with the AST, Svelte creates a component instance which the, in, which the component instance tracks references and dependencies of the code using the ASD. And then the next step is create a render instance depending on the compile options with the renderer. Svelte then uses it to generate code which is both JavaScript and CSS, and then writes both of them into the file system. So let's start from the beginning, the parsing. Well, Svelte implements its own parser, which handles HTML syntax, as well as logic blocks, like each, if, and await. And because JavaScript is fairly a complex language, 
when Svelte encounters a script tag or curly brackets, it will hand over to Acorn, a JavaScript parser, to pass the content. And then when Acorn finishes, it will pass it back to Svelte. The same thing goes with CSS as well. Svelte uses CSS tree to pass CSS content in between the style tag. Something that you might not know is that Svelte only accepts one uh, module script, one instance script, and one style tag. This is because in the final ASD that Svelte creates, it contains HTML for the template, a CSS tree, and an instance script ASD, and the module script ASD. You can click on the ASD Explorer to check this out. Right, HTML, CSS, Instance, and Module. Here is where you can read about the parser code for Spell. Next, Svelte goes to analyze the AST that was created. Firstly, Svelte creates a component instance. A component class stores information of the Svelte component, such as all the variables being declared, all the reactive variables declared using a reactive declarations, all the slots, pro slots to be provided by the component, all the compile options, warnings, and errors, and etc. So the first thing that the component do is to traverse through the instance script and module script AST. This is to find out all the variables being declared in the component, which will be useful later. So in this example, uh, name, taglines, and on click were discovered. Also, Svelte will find out what which variables get updated or reassigned in the script. In this example, you notice that name was reassigned to Svelte Society Day 2020. Next, it will traverse the template ASD. So during the traversal, when it encounters expressions, it will look up the variables that we collected previously and then mark them as reference. This is because variable that is not referenced from the template does not need to be reactive. And also, the element or logic block where the variables were found will keep the variable as dependencies. This indicates that whenever the variable change in the runtime, the current element or logic block will need to be updated. Besides, during the template traversal, Svelte transformed the template ASD into a fragment tree where each of the fragment node records more meta information. In this example, each block records the expression it will iterate through, the key and index, and the scope for its children node. In this example, each block creates a scope where it contains tagline. That's, that means that the children node within the each block when it refers to tagline, it refers to the one being declared by the each block instead of the one being declared in the script tag. After that, Svelte traverses through the instance script again. This time round is mainly for optimization, such as determining which variables or functions can be safely hoisted, as well as determine which reactive declaration does not have to be reactive because of not being referenced inside the template. Now, uh, Svelte will also go to update the CSS selectors, making sure that they are component scoped. Also warn for any unused selectors. Here is where you can read more about the component class. The next step is to generate the output code. In this step, Svelte will create a renderer instance to do the job. 
depending on the compile options, Svelte will either create a DOM renderer for client-side rendering or SSR renderer for server-side rendering. Let's first look at the DOM renderer. This will be the final output using the DOM renderer. If you look closely, you will see multiple fragment code blocks. Usually, a logic block will create multiple fragment blocks. Each fragment block represents an instruction on how to create, mount, update, and destroy the nodes within the fragment. For example, each block will create one fragment, which represent the instructions on create the DOM for one item. Whenever it iterates through the expression, it will call this fragment to create the DOM for that item. So when the DOM renderer traverses through the template AST, each node will start to create these fragment code blocks. The next thing you see is called the instance code block. Here it returns an array of variables to be used by the fragment block, which we call context. These variables are the ones to be reactive and Svelte will change all the reference in the template to point to this array. Next, Svelte will instrument assignments by wrapping all the updates statements and assignment statements to use in $invalidate. Next, we look at the SSR renderer. So here is a typical output of an SSR renderer. If you look at the return statement, you will see a template literal. So the SSR renderer provides helpful functions such as addString and add expressions. And when it traverses through the template ASD, each node will call addString or add expression to build out the final template literal. Finally, the both renderer returns JS and CSS with the code as well as the source map. So the code can be written into the file system or can be consumed by a bundler using Rollup Svelte plugin for Rollup or Svelte Loader for Webpack. So let's review again the Svelte compilation pipeline. Firstly, Svelte passes the code into AST and then it creates a component instance to track the variable references and dependencies. Next, Svelte creates a renderer depending on the compile options. So it could be a DOM renderer or a SSR renderer and the renderer will generate the output in JS and CSS. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more about Svelte, you can follow me on Twitter. I will post the link to the slide on my Twitter as well. Thank you.